I'm going to have to say some things I never thought I would ever have to say. And some other things that I always knew I'd have to say. My old friendly acquaintance, Mooney Savion, is apparently a murderer. Was. Now that he's dead. This, of course, assumes that the official story we're hearing is accurate. At this early stage, I don't see any reason to disbelieve the official story. Not yet, and not in terms of this allegation that he shot his nine-year-old son and then himself during a supervised visit. I believe the son's name was Joshua, and I believe I've met him. Two recollections. First, uh, in 2008, I was collecting signatures outside Manchester City Hall, and Mooney came by with a young man who I guess was about four years old at the time, so that must have been Joshua. He did not in any way strike me as a bad father. He, uh, in fact, it, it was memorable how uh, memorable how good he was at entertaining his son. Uh, he would pretend like he couldn't find him. Like, where, where's Joshua? I can't find you. I don't see Joshua. And Joshua would be right in front of him, and he'd be saying, I'm right here, and he'd say, I don't... I don't know where Joshua went. And the kid was just in stitches uh, how, how much fun he was having. Uh, I, I was so so amused by this that I uh, find myself, if I have to entertain a very young person, I, I will do that. Kids just love it. And I also remember this time where I was at a party or something and Mooney was there and there, there, you know, was a, there was a mother at the party who uh, apparently was not a psycho killer like Mooney, but um, was uh, maybe not the uh, not the most m responsible mother I've ever met. Well, he was entertaining her kids. I don't remember if he was singing to them or something like that. They were just, you know, enthralled with him. But she didn't kill her kids, and he did, apparently, kill his. It's just crazy. And I, I find that my brain is, is in overdrive, reverse something like that, trying to reimagine Mooney, because, again, I always thought of him not necessarily quite as a friend, but definitely a friendly acquaintance. I had just sold some Bitcoins to him about two months ago. You know, he, he, went, he, he went out of his way to make sure that it was easy for me to make the transaction. He was completely reliable, completely trusting. It never would have occurred to me even to think that he might not pay for the Bitcoins. It was like a foregone conclusion. He would do what he said. And, and, and so I'm having to retrain my brain over, the, I guess, the next few hours or days to think of, of him as someone I would have to kill if I had a time machine, right? I mean, that would be an appropriate use for a time machine if you had one, would be to go back and do him in rather than let him take an innocent life. How can I even imagine doing something like that? And yet... I feel I'm sort of forced to. Again, if he really did this. I can't believe I'm saying this stuff. And yet there was a time, I guess it would have been around 2003, I actually wrote an article that explained how I thought it should be handled if something like this happened. Now, the article did not envision a free stater, and I think Mooney was a free stater. He was definitely a person who moved to New Hampshire for more freedom about the same time as this project got started and was clearly, completely a part of our community. I don't know if I'm the one breaking this story or not. I guess it's better for us to say it than to sweep it under the rug and have the mainstream media report it before we do. But anyway... Let's let's read what I had to say back then and see if I'm complying with it. Okay, quote, Access and openness. You can't stop them from doing a story. Shutting the media out just makes it easier for them to make you look bad if that's even what they're after. Allow them as much unrestricted access as you can to our public meetings, etc., and return their calls promptly. As a rule, don't circle the wagons or stonewall when things go bad or we come under criticism. Since we're an organization of flawed humans, some of us are bound to screw up and get bad press we actually deserve. 
This is sometimes an opportunity to win public support by being open about our true failings and acting to better ourselves. I once worked for a station manager who served on the board of a local charity. The charity discovered that one of its employees had abused a child under its care. The board held a meeting, and a board member suggested keeping the incident quiet. My boss said, "No, we announce the crime ourselves. Give the media nowhere to go." They made the announcement, fired the worker, and watched as the wrath of the press fell on the perpetrator rather than them. One caveat: I'm talking about public matters here, not private ones. Declining to answer questions of a personal nature or party secrets is fine. Just don't get defensive and don't lie. Unquote. Okay, well, I guess I'm in compliance for what little that's worth. There will be folks who will be probably very angry with me for bringing this up. The fact that he's connected so much to us. I mean, there are free staters I've never even met who live in New Hampshire. I've probably been around Mooney twenty different times. He was that active, and he was very likable. I mean, he was also pretty generous. He、uh, he gave me equipment that helped me start the Ridley Report. Not super expensive stuff, but it really saved me a lot of trouble. When his suicide letter is released, I think we'll know more about his motives. But I'm just gonna guess that you know sometimes parents will kill their kids because they think it's the best thing for their kids, and their kids aren't ready to make the decision yet, and they want to spare them a terrible life. And I'm gonna just guess that that may have been what he was thinking. He seemed to really care about his youngster. It's it's almost like the the Kenji robot story, you know, right? It's a hoax story that supposedly where there was this artificial intelligence robot created to love people, and it loved them too much and wouldn't let them leave the room. <laughs> that wasn't real, but maybe that's a little bit of what was happening here, because it's just hard for me to imagine him doing something like this just to hurt somebody else. It's easier for me to imagine. That he had some twisted sense that this was the right thing to do, or that he's frigging Elijah or Moses or whoever it was on the mountain, hearing a voice from God telling him to put his son on an altar, right, and sacrifice him. I was going to say that we shouldn't bring religion into this. He's he's from Israel, but I didn't know if he was even religious or not. But apparently, from reading the articles about this, he did attend the synagogue. So I guess he is not only ethnically Jewish, but also uh, religiously. Uh, what's the uh, 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 practitioner of Judaism、uh, in, to some extent? So in the religion goes into the discussion of this crime against humanity, against Joshua, against Joshua's mother, and against me. If Mooney really did it, he just tainted me and you with his actions. If you're a free stater in New Hampshire, now all of us will have to live with being painted with the broad brush of what he did. Mooney, if you're listening to this, you should have done what Tom Ball did. If you had to kill yourself, you should have burned yourself alive in front of a courthouse in protest. That's the appropriate way to go out if you've got to take yourself out. I would have tried to talk you out of that too, but Tom Ball was a hero, and you are a traitor, apparently, if this information is true.